pleased to Maurizio support you and act as a brother when you got to PSG as a teenager? I don't know. I went from playing in, in League One to Champions League uh, a week later in Milan. You know, so I was all over the place. I didn't know. I could not speak the language. It was my first professional club. And uh, and I needed someone to be close to me, give me confidence, give me support because I was thrown away there and say, yeah, play. And it wasn't a starting eleven, so he was always, you know, giving me advice, giving me confidence, coaching me, talking to me. Um, he was really, really inspirational. He was really supportive. I was in the hotel with him for two, or three months, you know. So that period was key in my career to, to be able to make it. I don't think without him that uh, I wouldn't have the time that I had in Paris and then start my professional career. Do you have any specific memories or recollections of, of that time, what he said to you, what he did? <laughs> He's an expert of giving you confidence and then keeping you on your toes all the time, you know, and being really harsh on me and every time I was doing something, just be controlling me, you know, where you been last night. Uh, he, was, he, he really looked after me. He really looked after me. Is it going to be quite strange being competing against him? I think it's beautiful. It's something as well that happened with Pep. I think it's great that after those years that football puts you in this situation where where you you face each other and, um, and now we are both managing great clubs and in the best league in the world, you know. It doesn't get much better than that. Yeah. Paul, I just wonder, Paul. has that relationship ever flipped? Have you ever given him advice since you're also a manager now? <laughs> no. <laughs> You, you still... The only one is to give me the ball, you know. When I was there, give me more of the ball when I was a holding midfielder. But you're speaking really well about him because if you, you kind of still look up to him a little bit, is that how, it, how things are with the of you? Yes, because he, I'm so grateful for what he did for me and the way he guided me in those early years, you know. He got something else out of me that he was needed in that period to, to make it. That I stayed for me in, in, in my football career, whether it was as a, as a player or as a coach. Happens on game day, does it, does it, does it change? No, go for him. He's gonna do the same. We are both winners, and there is nothing else left there in 90 minutes. Rock, you ever? Nick, did you, um, how do you view the Mudrick signing? You were trying to sign him in January, he went to Chelsea. Chuck what, how do you view that sort of foul transfer? Disappointment, frustration? Very much. Nothing. I can talk only about the players that, that play for us and nothing else. Did you see as in Shanghai's message to him? After he scored that goal for Ukraine? Sorry? Did you see his message? That he was going to rip his balls off? I leave that to Alex to reply to that, <laughs> to that comment. Okay, finally, Gary. Clint, the way he sort of started, with players coming in, you obviously want them to do certain things. Where does he surpass expectations about the things he's done on the pitch that you, you perhaps didn't think he would settle so quickly? Well, I don't know. We have big expectations for him, so he's doing he's doing really, really well. Obviously, there is that question mark: how long is going to take him to do that, to glide into a team, to understand? Well, especially in big games, I think he's been he's been terrific, and that's what you need from from your big players. So, um, big compliment to him because he's done it very early and in a na really natural way as well. You said when when he signed, you wanted him to be a lighthouse, or mm. the rest of yeah. Has he been like that? Yeah. Give an example, maybe of how he's been to. To, to justify that. Yeah, he's got a big qualities that he makes the people around him better, he makes the team better. Um, he's always there, he's a big presence, he's got his aura around him. And uh, when you play for a big club, you need a player in midfield that is able to do that. Did, did you sign him specifically for the big games? Because when you look at the sort of the City and United game, you had those the big moments. The City the, the tackle and the United obviously the goal. Was it specifically for those big games that you saw what why you wanted? Well, those players are very necessary in big games because you need big performances and, and players that can't unlock a game or can't contribute in key moments. But obviously, we need him for every game um, to continue to develop our way of playing and um, and be better. Okay, I think just finally, Sachin, if you've got a quick one, yeah. Yeah, I just want to ask you about Kai Abbott, uh, Mikel. Um, there has been some scrutiny over his performances. I just wonder how, just your general assessment of how he is going into what would be quite an emotional game for him at Chelsea and if there are any issues with his confidence, how he is kind of mentally, given there has been some scrutiny over how he settled it. Continue to do the last touch of the game that he had and the contribution he had against City was terrific. It was difficult to make a decision and you know, not to play him, but um, but as well we we knew that the last 25, 30 minutes against City were gonna be critical and the impact that the soft had um, was 
uh, detrimental for the results and, and I'm really happy the way he reacted and, and contributed to the team. Did you feel like quite a big moment for him? Then? I hope so. I hope so. And um, and I can I can see that the confidence is shifting and and he's in a much better place. And we have to continue to do that and needs to play. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.